we are the most underrated show of all time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks. <laughs> Subscribe, like. See you next time, guys. Bye. We're, we're all ten. We're all ten. We're literally the whole top ten. We're, anim we're an animated duo. We're super animated. Bye, guys. <laughs>
this show very soon in Hester Brothers Cartoon Theater. So subscribe so that you can see that one when it comes out. My uh, highlighted honorable mention is a show called Over the Garden Wall, which is a very short one season show that is very bingeable and perfect for the Halloween season. It's got a very Brothers Grimm storybook feel to it. Very unique and not something I've heard too many people hear of, but you know, people who have seen it tend to love it. So not also top five. Well, those were our honorable mentions, but now we are going to get into each of our top fives. We're calling it a top 10. These are our most underrated cartoons. I'm going to kick this off with one that I don't think that people are going to expect to see here. Rocky and Bullwinkle. If you're thinking Rocky and Bullwinkle is such a beloved cartoon, it's a classic, it's one of everybody's favorites. But when you look at the list of classic cartoons, Mickey Mouse, the Looney Tunes, you have these major short films that were really owning that market. I think that Rocky and Bullwinkle is a show that often gets overlooked as far as great short cartoons from that era. And now it was a little bit after some of those big ones hit. I think that Rocky and Bullwinkle is closer to the 60s and 70s. And then the early Looney Tunes cartoons in Disney were more like the 40s and 50s. But Rocky and Bullwinkle is super slapstick. The characters are really likable and they have stood the test of time. So in my opinion, uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle, despite being beloved, is not nearly as recognized as it should be for how good of a cartoon it is. So that was Alex number five, not to be mistaken with 10. So I want you guys in the comments to rank our rankings. Which of us in our top five is better? Which of our top four is better? You guys put the own ranking and decide what our actual total top 10 is. And let us know who you think has a better top five. My number five is the little show called Bravest Warriors. From the creator Pendleton Ward, same guy who did Adventure Time and the Midnight Gospel as I was talking about earlier, Pendleton Ward created this web series that is a science fiction show about a bunch of teens that go through the universe in uh, sometime past 3000 AD, saving aliens and going into all sorts of crazy hijinks. It's got the hilarious writing and tight story structure that Pendleton Ward has brought to us with his other creations. And it's something that I seriously recommend to anybody who's a fan of that style and this generation of animation. You can find it all on YouTube. It's an animation style that I love. Pendleton Ward is a hero of mine when it comes to a content creator. Adventure Time is my favorite show. This is probably going to be the only really kid-friendly uh, show on my list also. For all you kiddies out there and for all your parents looking for uh, recommendations from your <laughs> for your kids, Alec is the guy and this is the only show that might even possibly cross that and even then it's kind of more for teens. <laughs> My number four most underrated cartoon is Disney's Fillmore. Uh, probably one that many people have not heard of, and I would say the rest in my top five you probably have, but this cartoon followed two kids who were safety patrol officers at their school, but it treated it like it was an actual crime drama. So it was basically a parody of some of these mystery crime shows that you would see on network TV, but in cartoon form. And as a kid, I loved that. I came home every day and was so excited to watch Fillmore on TV because I loved mysteries. And this was a really easy way for me to watch them that was not scarring. The show took itself so incredibly seriously as if these were true crimes being committed, but it was part of the parody. Like it was That's intentionally cool. that way. And wow. it was fun and weirdly dark and edgy. And the characters were really complex. And for a formulaic show, it really, like, knocked it out of the park. Yeah. My number four is a show that was aired on Adult Swim called Super Jail. The production company that did Super Jail also did Space Ghost Coast to Coast, Rick and Morty, Venture Bros, Robot Chicken, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, a bunch of those huge Adult Swim shows that I'm sure a lot of you guys have been fans of. This show is definitely not as well known as all of them. Admittedly, probably because it's not as good as a lot of them. I will say there's like no plot line. It's just a wild, offensive show that has the psychedelic, craziest animation. And I love every second of it. It is totally just an excuse to animate the craziest stuff. It's essentially this psychotic, Willy Wonka-like 
character who's a warden who runs an intensely ridiculous jail underneath a volcano. It's only 36 episodes long, and it is a ridiculous animation fest. And for a show that, you know, was probably aired for high kids at 3 o'clock in the morning on Adult Swim, the animation's actually really good. It's really creative, and when I was watching this show, I was actually blown away with the kind of animation style that they used. Um, and I'm sure not many people have heard of it, because it was one of those weird 3 a.m. shows on Adult Swim. So, uh... Go check it out if you're into that stuff. It's it's a gem. I really think it was a gem of that uh, that genre. We were raised the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that sounds awful to me. But I bet that there's a oh, large you'd part hate of the it. audience. That, yeah, I know it's probably probably a large part of the audience that would really love it, and I appreciate you bringing it to attention for those people. My number three cartoon is actually Hey Arnold, which you might be thinking is, again, very beloved. It's actually not as well respected as you might think. I went to IGN's top 100 animated series list because I kind of use that as a reference sometimes to see whether a show is well respected or whether it's not. And I was shocked to not see Hey Arnold there. And as I went around, Hey Arnold is not really regarded as one of the great cartoons of its decade, but it totally is. This show is so real. And when you're a kid growing up, you're so used to seeing cartoons that are super zany, but this really just followed a group of kids that were living life and it wasn't easy. These are kids that actually had to go through some stuff. Didn't it take place in, in like inner city Brooklyn or something? New York somewhere? It took I believe it took place in an inner city in New York. Their show has so many good characters. Oh, it has yeah. so many relatable concepts. And it has so many great spooky episodes that just push the boundaries of what you were comfortable seeing as a kid sometimes. I definitely have more of an appreciation of it as an adult than I did as a kid because it was a little bit too adult for me. I really think that it's one of the great cartoons of the 90s into the early 2000s, and it really should be recognized as such. My number three is Freakazoid, which is also a show that we recently did a review on. So go check out the review of uh, Freakazoid because I'll obviously go into more detail about it there. Uh, Warner Brothers did it, Steven Spielberg was the producer, and it stars this superhero that is just off the wall bonkers. And uh, I, I watched it for our show, you know, to do this review, and I've totally fallen in love with it. I've At this time of recording, I've actually almost finished both seasons. I'm surprised it doesn't get as much love as Animaniacs. People, yeah. have, like, Animaniacs is considered one of the greatest animated shows of all time, and people love it for how groundbreaking it was in terms of edgy humor. And we're, you know, we talk about all these animation reboots, and honestly, I hate the fact that we get all these reboots. I want to see original content. But uh, in terms of a show that deserved the notoriety to get an undeserved reboot, I think Freakazoid definitely should have. I think some people are going to be screaming at their screens when I give my number two choice, but I have to be authentic to myself. Yes. And my number two choice is Digimon. Pokemon's a very popular show. Pokemon is a great show, and it has done an amazing job as a franchise. No Definitely. doubt more successful and has made a better name for itself than Digimon ever did. The original Digimon Adventure series is better than the original Pokemon Indigo League series. People love to compare the two. They're really nothing alike. Uh, it's literally yeah. just that both of them end in Mon. So in Pokemon, you collect all of these creatures. You've gotta catch them all, that's the thing. But Digimon, it is the story of a bunch of kids getting stranded in the digital world, and they have one partner Digimon to help get them through it. Yeah. And the story is captivating. Yeah. And they probably spend a little bit too much time on the Digivolution sequences. But the series actually has good writing. It has good stories. The world building is phenomenal. And they lost hold of the franchise. There's no doubt about that. But that original series is genuinely excellent. And I don't know if people who didn't grow up with it would get as much joy as we do revisiting it, but I just watched it again and I still think it was phenomenal. I think that people just overlook it in favor of Pokemon when they are completely different shows and the same audience might not like both. My number two is an anime that is not very well known called Paranoia Agent. 
Paranoia Agent was done by the great Satoshi Kon. Now, a lot of you guys, I'm sure, have heard of Miyazaki, right? Spirited Away, Mirtha's Mononoke, Grave of Fireflies. Amazing filmmaker. But there's someone who is also an amazing anime filmmaker that, in my opinion, rivals Miyazaki. And he makes a little bit more adult content, which is why I think he's not as well known. And he's created amazing films such as Paprika, Perfect Blue, and Tokyo Godfather. All of which are amazing. Uh, some may be a little disturbing for some people, so definitely look into them before you see them. But I love this guy. I love his animation, and his editing is brilliant. Paprika is the movie that inspired Inception. So the show Paranoia Agent, uh, I'm not really even going to tell you guys much what it's about, because A, it's kind of hard to describe, um, and if I told you, it really wouldn't illustrate how amazing of a show it is anyway. It's a single season, 13 episodes. It's a psychological thriller that's... Again, just really difficult to describe. It's a very kind of trippy show. It's kind of like a, it's a mystery where you're kind of trying to discover what's going on as you watch it. And it is amazing from beginning to end. Satoshi Kon had a too short of a life and wasn't able to create a huge body of work. So this is the only TV show he ever did. And it is so good. And if you love anime or psychological thrillers or anything about any of what I just described, you got to go check it out. Well, Lucas, I generally really dislike intense shows. They're a little bit much for me, but the way you described that made me a little bit interested to actually see what oh, that's about. It's so so if there's people who enjoy uh, that genre, I definitely think that that sounds like something that could be good for you. Now, it's time for our number ones, Lucas. Number one. And leading up to this, mm. I said earlier I have a Disney bias. And I didn't want to have too much Disney on the show. I already gave you Fillmore. But my number one most underrated cartoon is actually Lilo and Stitch the series. People might be wondering what this is all about. And that's good. That's what makes it underrated. A lot of the time, Disney has phenomenal movies. Then they release sequels that are not as good. And everybody hates on the sequels. Pretty normal. Oftentimes, I think that people associate the sequels somehow with the television shows that would spin off from the movies yeah. and just assume that they weren't good. And that was rarely the case. Even recently, Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure, the new Tangled show, is excellent. Really, really good. Almost made my list, but I wanted to use this opportunity to talk about it. Lilo and Stitch is the best one of all of these because... Lilo and Stitch is its brand new, fresh concept. If you haven't seen Lilo and Stitch at all, basically the aftermath of it is that Lilo, this little girl from Hawaii, adopts what she thinks is a dog, Stitch. He's actually an alien experiment. And now they live on Hawaii with the creator of these creatures, Jumba, and their friend, Pleakley. Jumba created over 600 of these experiments. And many of them are not touched upon in the movies, but that's what the show is about. All of the experiments that Jumba has created, these alien creatures, end up on this Hawaiian island. And every episode is Lilo and Stitch finding another one and basically finding a home for it to turn it in from a havoc-wreaking creature to something that's useful for society. I revisited this show lately because Lucas and I had fond memories of it growing up. We loved it so much that we made a Lilo and Stitch card game yeah. for fun. And it was great. Uh, with all of the experiments. Yeah. It was fun. We had a good battle and system. We should have done it for a living. What made this show great was that if it had been a show first, it didn't need a movie. It was already an extremely strong concept. Every episode gave you a new one of these aliens, and it was always different. You know, these were not similar. Like, they were all very creative and different concepts. I think the writers did a phenomenal job of creating this universe. Yeah. It holds up. That's the thing that you don't expect. You think this is a kid's show, but you can watch an episode right now and it's still really, really funny. And who doesn't love Hawaii? The setting is awesome. Yeah, it's a so good setting. So I believe that this show doesn't get the love that it deserves. I think it's an all-time great and one of the best shows that you could show to your kids that they will absolutely love. What's your number one pick? Mine's cheating a little bit. I chose the Has-Been Hotel as my number one pick. The reason this is kind of cheating is because technically only a pilot has been released. This is a YouTube show, and I will say, as YouTube shows go, this is also very popular and people do think it's great. But the reason that I put chose it for number one is because I really want to showcase just how amazing I think this show is and how great it could be. 
The creator Vivzy Pop put this show out on Halloween three or four years ago, and it has gained an enormous following on YouTube, and a lot of people don't know this, so if you've seen Has Been Hotel, listen up. The show has been bought by a TV network, and it is going to be airing on television as a full series very soon. The show Hell of a Boss is also one that the same creator did that is airing on YouTube right now, and a lot of people think that the, the creators like that show more, which is why they're doing it there, and that's not the case. They're putting all of their love and a ton of money and editing prowess into uh, this show Has Been Hotel, and I want to hype it up because I loved this pilot. It is super adult humor. It's really edgy. The animation is stellar. I have no idea how they were able to get a budget. Apparently it took about two years for them to make it and it came out amazing. I love the story. I love the characters. They're creating this universe in hell where it's essentially all of these lost souls, obviously, that have gone to hell that used to live on earth, which is all part of the canon. And this character, Charlie, has created a hotel that is designed to rehabilitate souls in hell and try to fix their lives to send them to heaven. And it is such a wild concept for a show. I would say that there's like a power system because we've been introduced to this character, Alistair, who's called the Radio Demon. And he's somebody who is extremely powerful and is feared by other demons in hell. And... It's just such an amazingly creative show. The voice acting is stellar. The animation is stellar. And I'm so hyped to see where it goes. I've bought merch just from this pilot. I thought it was so good. And I don't buy merch ever from anything. But I really wanted to put this as number one because I think it's so good. I mean, I think this has the potential to rival Rick and Morty as one of the best adult animated shows of all time. I think it's that good. Right. I'm so hyped for it. I'm hoping that the show that follows through carries this hype uh, i don't know but i've got good faith that these creators are going to do great with it so that's my number one well i love your enthusiasm uh we're not rating the shows with the most potential but you came in hot and i think that's fantastic i'm saying it's that good from its pilot it's got a better pilot than any show that's been on my whole list so far better first episode but all for of sure all of the rest of the shows have an entire showcase to demonstrate and say we are underrated whereas this one the rest could be crap I, I i'm assuming it's not i know that you have a lot of faith it sounds like alec is underrating this making it even more deserving of being on the <laughs> list you got me there all right <laughs> lucas well we're about done here awesome. uh thank you everybody for listening this was so much fun uh, once again, if we get to 100 subscribers, we are going to release our next top 10 episode, and we have some good ideas for what that might be. Uh, so please like and subscribe. We do really appreciate it. Our social media can be found below. 